1875 was a very good year and is a good place to begin our story. In that year, both William Henry Austin and Harriet Abigail Allen were born. They were to meet later and marry and begin their lives in Leicester, England. At the age of 21, they would have their first child, Harry Austin, born in 1896. Two years later, in 1898, a daughter, Dolly, was born, followed by another sister, Flory, born in 1901. Three years later, William Bill Alfred Austin was born on January 26, 1904. He would be the middle of seven surviving children. A brother, Joe, was born in 1905, sister Mabel in 1907, and finally Kathleen in 1917. Kathleen is still living in England at the age of 101. According to Bill, his family was poor but proud. The result was that due to a lack of proper Sunday clothing, none of us ever attended church or Sunday school. As Bill was growing up in his teens, his one dream was to play soccer. Soccer was not associated with universities as much as towns, so he wanted to play for the town of Leicester. Apparently, wearing a hat was a norm for attending a soccer match. In his quest for that goal, he played for a church league, which required that he attend a Bible class periodically. A few of his new friends invited him to their home in time, offered him a Bible, and would then ask him what he had thought of what he was reading. He began to read and, quote, soon found that the word began to make more sense to me, and I was literally on my face before the Lord, acknowledging my sin and receiving Jesus as my sin bearer and savior, end quote. Receiving a Bible and coming to know the Lord would have an impact on the rest of his life. He soon found he was involved in a young man's Bible class and open air witness, and was soon appointed leader. Practically every waking moment when I was not at work was spent in either the study or the ministry of the Word, and I reveled in it. He eventually, in 1937, enrolled in Barry School of Evangelism, a college founded in 1936. He gained experience in pastoring local churches and literally dug into the work of building churches. But at the end of his two-year education there, the Lord brought him in contact with a woman, Miss E. Nans, who was about to go to Chile under the fellowship of the Gospel and Soldiers Mission of South America. At the age of 35, he was convicted by the Lord that South America was where he was to go. But things were complicated. He applied to the mission, was accepted after passing the physical. He now needed to wait almost two years for a visa to go to Chile. During this time, World War II broke out in 1939 and things grew even worse. It seems strange that he was granted a visa and not conscripted into the army, but he had applied for the visa before the war broke out, and he was 35 and older than most of the recruits of the day. When asked about this, he said, Sometimes I am asked why in the midst of all the need of the moment, the British government is allowing men to go out to the mission field. My answer is that I believe the eye of the British authorities is on a greater, fuller peace than the immediate, and that they believe the preaching of the gospel of peace to be the one great hope of the nations of the world ever to live in peace. He was finally granted a visa only to have the ship on which he was trying to board confiscated for military service. He finally boarded the ship Gascony with Captain R. Whittle, July 23, 1941. The convoy of the ship in which he was traveling was attacked by a German submarine, damaging the ships in front of him and behind him without his vessel being touched. He reached Buenos Aires, Argentina on September 3rd where he was held over trying to get his papers approved for the final leg around the tip of South America. He was finally able to book passage on the Chilean ship SS Puente Arenas. He finally landed in Valparaiso, Chile, October 16, 1941. He had literally been trying to learn Spanish on the ship on the way to Chile. 
but was overwhelmed when he tried to speak and especially trying to understand what the locals were saying. He worked with an older missionary, Henry Tobelman, in southern Chile to learn the ministry of connecting with locals. This involved, quote, much traveling on horseback, visiting schools, homes, etc., and using a schoolhouse as a church on Sunday. After two years of traveling around Chile by horseback, apparently saving up to buy his own horse, boat, and walking, he became fluent in Spanish and felt good about his new ministry. In 1943, at the age of 39, he also found love for the first time. The object of his affection was Louise Brown, a secretary to Mr. Strong, the head of the Gospel and Soldiers Mission of South America. In a letter to Louise Brown, he wrote, Heart of mine, it is not every day of the week that the girl I love writes to tell me she loves me too. I long to see you. I'm sort of walking in the clouds. Yours, Osti. They were married November 11, 1943. Louise Brown will be the object of the next episode.